this is a uh, straight ball. Uh, it's pre-distorted, so when it jumps up, the shape of the uh, the shape of the ball will stay circular. As you cut away, it's still circular. It goes down. It's pre-distorted, so it stays circular. It bounces quickly, and these white supports hold it from uh, falling over. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of support on the other side to make sure it holds up. And that way it will um, it will be just the right amount to actually hold it in midair because about right here it has to stay in midair without falling over. You need a little bit of support down there to keep that happening. If I were to fully finish this piece, I would probably want to put some support underneath each side of the tube so the circles don't distort. So this is some support clay or blocking clay or whatever you want to call it, a, uh, a negative shape that holds the positive shape, that holds the basic so I'm choosing white again because it's on a white piece of paper and therefore it's the least in the way. Clay is ultimately very heavy. It's a, you have to think of it as a slow moving liquid, kind of like glass, only with a much lower melt temperature and a much, you know, frozen clay doesn't move very much, just like glass doesn't move very much. But at room temperature, it's easy to work with, a little warmer than room temperature and it starts to sag really quickly. So it's a very beautiful medium, but it's also a very transient and easily damaged one. So part of the uh, key of now supporting it, you can see it's uh, <coughs> probably just about ready to animate like this. Bouncing ball straight, lifts up, goes down, lifts up again. I'm gonna put a little bit of extra glue here between these two these two uh, joints, just to make sure that as it's being cut away, it's not uh, doesn't fall apart too quickly. All right. I think uh, the next thing to try is bouncing ball, bouncing backwards and forwards, side to side. So the basic shape would be um, we'll cut some basic loops to begin this. If a ball is going back and forth and back and forth through time, you have to put it on the z-axis so the motion is um, basically is going to move back and forth like this. Okay. and forth and back and forth. Now again I'm assuming that I'm cutting toward the camera away from away from the camera straight and I have to do all the different um, pre-distortions into this animation before it gets going and I have to think through what those distortions are going to be. So not only is it going on a sideways angle which means I sort of have to pre-distort everything a little bit this way. I have to actually take every every uh, planned sideways shape and put a put a little bit of a oblong into it. So that's what it looks like from below. But when it's cut on an angle, it'll come out more circular. So each one of these pieces that is the ball bouncing back and forth needs a little bit of that work done to it. It's important not to just flatten the side, but to actually work it on three different angles, you know, to actually uh, do the do the side like that and then to pinch it just a little bit on both sides. So it's a more accurate resulting ball or circle. You always have to think through the ultimate result of what you're trying to do and sort of reverse engineer it back into motion over time. Um, Alright, 
So that's four pieces to help the ball go back and forth. We'll go ahead and cut one just to see kind of what it does. So that's a pretty good pre-distorted circle. Um, not perfect, but good enough to get the exercise across. Now, just like in the in the straight bouncing ball example, this back and forth example, I'm gonna have to cut where it lands. And I have to deal with where it lands by pinching this shape this way now. So um, it's actually distorted in two directions um, as it's coming down. Let me think that through. It has to be distorted this way. And oh yes, a little bit this way. So it's not a pure it's not a contradiction, it's more of a a little bit of extra angular momentum. So I'm pressing it in this direction, which actually puts it on an angle. It's not actually 90 degrees pressing back, it's actually at an angle to the uh and that will give, right now this is going to be a bit, uh, a bit, uh, I'm going to straighten it out. So it's again more like the uh, St. Louis Arch. There. Okay. That's about as best as I could hope. Once I get that, I'm going to have to cut this piece off. Um, it's not, uh, again, a perfect example. You can see it's basically the ball leaving the ground. Here, let me cut it a little tighter. This will be a little easier to see. What I'm trying to do is get the curve of the back side of the ball back into it so you can kind of see that it's... Now, I'm going to leave the slightly oblong shape in it because that's a little bit of what uh, animation often does when there's motion. Um, why not let a little bit of the motion go toward the direction uh, where it's headed? Uh, the upwards. The issue will be trying to get a static ball to go into that shape. Um, and this joint is going to be a little funky. I would like to have done better, but it gets the you get the idea. Okay, so ball at rest, ball moving uh, left to right, screen left to right. Your view. I'm gonna go ahead and um, pre-distort this. Oops, wrong way. This way and this way. Straighten it out a little bit. Cut it off. I think it's going to want to cut like that. Now, if I wanted to play with the animation to make a more of a, a traditional stretch and squash ball, would have it. Uh, the ball would be a little flatter on the bottom, and then it would bounce back up, and then it would retain its shape as it went down into the ground, hit the ground, and then bounced around. Um, I haven't done that here. You can, of course, do it. You would have to uh, push, you'd have to take probably this piece and um, push a little anticipation into it, like it's about to lift off, and then it distorts up. So this is a kind of idea where I fattened, I fattened the two sides of it, made it go down a little bit as a way before it begins to uh, lift off. Um, I would need to put an in-between here. Let's go ahead and try to do this bouncy thing this way. So it's a little more springy. Um, 
this in between is a very sh short shape that um, is trying to be fat in the middle but skinny on both sides. I don't know if you can tell what I'm trying to make there. It's a fat squat shape leading into this oval, this, this higher oval shape. So it's high oval here to match that, but then it's fat and squat in the middle to make this more bounced idea for the ball. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut off this piece. All of these things are going to have to get a little bit of glue back on the back side. Okay. Here's another um, joint being made that mimics the ball getting thicker at the at the middle and getting thinner as it bounces up. Um, I would probably spend a little more time on that, but you can see it gets thick in the middle and then it becomes oblong on both sides. So that's going to glue. Let me show it to you this way. It's going to glue into this joint. Um, this piece needs a little bit of work, a little bit of straightening uh, with the motion, a little bit of tapering, so it's anticipating the direction. That's what it, the result is. It glues into this um, little bounce moment, comes back. Um, I'm going to cut this part off. That's pretty steep, unfortunately, but um, we'll keep working with it. Um, let me use this piece. No, it's a different color blue. Um, I'll go ahead and use one more and uh, try to quickly make another. Uh, joint, a uh, squash, squash little piece. Again, this only works because it's abstract shapes inside there. If it was uh, an actual logo or a pattern on the ball, I'd have to work a lot harder to use the same idea, but actually really micro manipulate the way the pattern is lining up. So these little joint pieces I'm making that create the bouncy part of the ball would be harder to do but the demonstration here is to make the principle known. Okay, that's the part that's going to glue to it. There's a little squash. This part comes this way. And it's going to finish here with a little bit of... I'm going to take this last dovetail and really do a great, uh, a better, a better job, I should say, of, of squishing it out. This is what I would have liked to have done on all of those. See how this is sort of like a cobra neck, and then this is more oval, and so this is, this really represents the squash of the ball as it comes to a stop. All right, that's pretty much a bouncing ball going backwards and forwards. I'm now going to work a little bit on supporting it again with white clay, so it's actually a uh, a piece that can be cut up later. It can't. This this is flying clay right now, and if I were to try to take a knife to it, it would as likely as not fall apart. So I'm putting in support clay. Again, the color white to keep it from uh, to make it as in as uh, uh, invisible to the to the white background so I can make it because it's just a demo. Um, Alright. And uh, I could... I don't think I'll seal these joints. I think they're going to be fine as long as I make sure that they're pressed together well enough. Um, more support goes underneath each arch, so it looks like I'm going to have to build eight supports.
for four arches. I'll build them fairly quickly because it's screen time. Screen time goes slow if you repeat a lot of stuff like this. And the principle of it is to just thoroughly make sure that there's enough uh, base support to allow the circle, the ball itself, the flying animated center to be visible on screen as it bounces back and forth. Okay, I'm a little over halfway done with that. On the sixth, the sixth flying support beam. And on to the seventh and the eighth. Now, I'll show you from the front view. So this ball, in a sense, will anticipate going down for a beat before it flies up. And that is now ready to be cut up and to animate. And it will show just how to it'll be a good, you know, a way of seeing the bouncing ball. Side to side, back and forth. Beep, 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 beep. If I were to take this earlier piece and add the squash to it, now that I have it, and I wanted to add the squash moments to it, I would have to separate back out this joint, put in a sculpt one of these uh, moments where the clay bunches up, gets thick. That is probably the proper amount of clay to, to make a, a, a good squash. And again, I'm going to try to do a cobra, kind of a cobra neck for a snake, where it fattens out to become blobby momentarily. Now I'm bunching it up a little bit better. That's a, that's a better idea for how that joint should look. I'm going to put it in the middle here. Put the two pieces back together. Um, on this one I'll go ahead and seam it, just it'll make it sort of sturdy so it doesn't uh, fly around, so it's safe to cut. I'm going to go ahead and re, re, uh, readjust, I guess, these front pieces a little bit. I want to make a little cobra thing. Part of that is to stretch it out and part of it is to squish it down. And then to go back to this part that the actual joint that touches the other piece of clay. I have to get it to. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and resupport that on both sides. Almost done. I want to get this one too. Again, this is a straight bounce. And why not add a little stretch and squash to your straight bounce? It it's a clever, you know, uh, time honored uh, cell animation technique. Um, the bouncing ball, the bag of flour, they all have anticipation before they uh, move. Someone once told me in animation, it's a lot like uh, acting or um, comedy that I guess Charlie Chaplin once said this and it's true for animation is that you first need to tell them what you're going to say, uh, say it bounce, tell them what you said, and then repeat it again. So it's actually three actions. It's any good mime will anticipate before he acts, do a motion, and then overdo that motion to react afterwards. Uh, so you have three telltale moments in every action. You have the action itself and an anticipation and a reaction on both ends of it so that bookend the action. And that's kind of what this is doing to do the stretch and squash. All right, this will be cut up this way. Do -do 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 -do. And this piece, of course, will be cut up the same direction, but it will be a ball going wing, 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 back and forth. <laughs>